on Larry King now, the actress Nia Long. I wanted to do half hour. I started in half hour with Will Smith. I wanted to just go to work and laugh. Like, life is so serious, it's intense. There's kids, there's all these moving parts. I thought, you know what, going to work and laughing could be really good for my soul. Projects are described as a black movie or a black TV show. Mm -hmm. Does that bug you? I think in this country, we always have to put labels on things and categorize things. And it's a way to make fearful people more comfortable. Name a movie you wish you'd been in. Oh, Beaches with Bette Midler. Name a movie you wish you hadn't been in. <laughs> a movie you made that you regret. Plus, J. Cole is the latest to mention you. He raps in his song, No Role Models. My only regret was too young for Nia Long. He's really not too young. He just doesn't know it. <laughs> All next on Larry King Now. Larry King now, our special guest is Nia Long, the NAACP Image Award winning actress. You know her from Friday, Boys in the Hood, Alfie, Soul Food, and the Best Man series, among many other films and TV series. Nia now stars in a movie from the minds of Key and Peel called Keanu. That's in theaters April 29th. She also stars in the upcoming ABC comedy series and a remake of the 1989 hit movie Uncle Buck. We'll talk about that a little later. She's a pretty involved lady. <laughs> Before we go into anything, you have a story about me? I do. I what do. is that, Nia? Oh, my gosh. So I was on a show called Third Watch, living in New York. And I was taking a flight, a very early morning flight. And I walked to my seat, and there you were, sitting there reading your paper. And I was like, I had that, like, that moment where I was like, oh, it's Larry King. And I sat next to you the whole flight. I couldn't even figure out what to say to you because I was so nervous. And I was, and I literally sat there and I was like, okay, he probably doesn't know you. He has never seen any of your movies. You're like, he's not going to know you. I so never spoke to you? No, but you were nice. Your energy, the, the radiant energy that was oh. popping off of your body was very good and positive. So. <laughs> and I didn't speak to you. I must have been on a really bad day. No, you know what it was? It was really super early. I always like to get up early and fly early. Yeah. I like to get back here early. Yeah, me too. I don't like to lose mm. a day. So that's my Larry King story. So this is much better because now we actually get to talk. Okay, what's Keanu <laughs> about? Keanu is about two lovesick cousins played by Key and Peele. Um, Jordan Peele is heartbroken and his girlfriend breaks up with him and one day he opens his door and there's this beautiful little kitten and that becomes the new love of his life until he's robbed and the cat is stolen. And so it, the, the story's really about this wild goose, goose chase to find this little kitten. It's a comedy. It's a comedy. It's a did, very did funny comedy. Did it have comedy. anything to do with Keanu Reeves? No, but you know what? When I got the script, I thought, thought the same thing, and I just was, like, flipping through pages, and I'm like, there's nothing in here about Keanu Reeves, so. And you made a deal with your son about the movie? I did, because. Which is? Well, he actually introduced me to Key and Peele. I had never heard of them. They are a comedic duo and they are funny and their comedic nuances are special. They're smart, they're silly. They're all of the things that come with being a good comedic, comedic pair. Who do you pair. play? My character's name is, what's my character's name? Oh, I know, Hannah. See, I've, I've been playing all these different I women. Know. You, I just, look, you do a thousand things. Jesus, but I know. What kind of girl is Hannah? She's kind of crunchy granola spiritual meditation girl and her husband is very like like um conservative a little a little nervous a little bit of a nerd not comfortable in his own skin so by finding this cat he sort of grows a pair you know what i mean larry did you have fun doing it i did had a good Boys time. in the Hood was your first film role. You yeah. played opposite my friend Cuba Gooding Jr. Love him. He's a great guy, isn't he? He's a great guy. He's a, he's so up all the time. He has so much energy that Does he ever get down? I've never seen him down. Although I'm, I will tell you the night that we had to film our love scene, it was like the first love scene for both of us in Boys in the Hood. And I was so nervous and his hands were sweaty. And I was like, Cuba, you cannot touch me with sweaty hands. And that's how we became 
so close. He's like, I'm glad you told me. <laughs> Did you watch him in People vs. O.J.? I did not catch that. You didn't see it? I didn't see it. You know why? I'm really good friends with Arnell Simpson. And we were friends for, you know, we've been friends since we were young girls. And I felt, I just didn't want to go through that story again because I love her so much and I knew it would evoke some sort of emotion for me. keep in touch? Yeah, we talk all the time. How's she doing? It's tough. Oh, I'll bet. It's tough because she's the eldest and she sacrificed a lot of her own life to be there for her father. And she's a beautiful person and Does a beautiful girl. Does she keep in touch with her father? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Goes to visit him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the leading men you've worked with over the years. Okay. Tay Diggs. Chocolate, chocolate, yummy. Terrence Howard. Ooh, Terrence Howard is mysterious. Dangerous. Know. He's dangerous and mysterious, but you know what? He's a genius. Mike Epps. Oh, I love him so much. He's like my brother. He's my Scorpio brother. I'm so excited about this show we're doing together. Martin Lawrence. Funny, funny, funny. A little shy. Yeah. But lovely. Will Smith. Aw, Will. <laughs> Who don't you like? Ice Cube. Eyebrows. I always, you know, let me tell you something about Ice Cube. So I was. Deathly intimidated by Ice Cube for so many years, but once I saw Straight Outta Compton, I had so much compassion for him because he was actually writing the film Friday in the movie Straight Outta Compton. Mm. And so I was in Friday with him, so it was like a little bit of history within this new new old story. Yeah. And I realized in that moment that we really can't be so quick to judge people because he had been taken advantage of for so many years and here he is telling a stormy story. So for Ice Cube, I would say respect. You were on Fresh Prince. Have you been in everything? Not everything. What a career you've had, though. I'm, I feel very blessed, very blessed. I'm told you're mentioned in a lot of hip-hop lyrics. Oh, yeah, Neil Long. And- Kanye West, J. Cole, a trod called Quest. Yeah. How do you get? Why do they talk about you in hip hop music? I don't know. I don't know. Are you kind of a sex symbol? The truth. Are well, you? I would have to. Ha- I-, I need to ask you that. What do you think? Well, if I didn't talk to you on the plane, I must have had a bad day. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say no. <laughs> no. I must have been in delusional. So I think the thing with me and hip hop music. The, here's the deal. So I grew up in a time where you know Puffy Combs was you know, running nightclubs in New York City and Boys in the Hood was out and Heavy D and uh, my beloved brother who I miss madly. Um, You had Biggie Smalls, you had Tupac and there was Boys in the Hood. So this was an era where we were all sort of growing up in this business and kind of changed the game a little bit and gave, you know, urban music, rap music, um, black films. We had a space to actually do our thing. And, And I think that um, the rappers just kind of are feeling me along a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's just kind of part of the acknowledgement. Fact, Jay know? Cole is the latest to mention you. He raps in his song, No Role Models. My only regret was too young for Nia Long. He's really not too young. He just doesn't know <laughs> it. <laughs> Our guest is Nia Long. Up next, we'll get Nia's take on diversity and Hollywood details on the latest in the Best Man series. Don't go away. <laughs> Back with Nia Long, Keanu opens April 29th. What's going on with the latest in the Best Man series? Best Man Wedding, right? I don't know. We're still waiting to get that script. Hopefully it'll happen. You are in it, right? I am in it, yeah. I mean, as far as I know. Projects are described as a black movie or a black TV show. Mm -hmm. Does that bug you or is it self-described? I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's self-described because it is the obvious. But I also think in They don't call it white movie, though. Right. Yeah. And I think in this country, we always have to put labels on things and categorize things. And it's a way to make fearful people more comfortable. And I think that we're living in a time where people are very afraid of a lot of things. And so the entertainment business is not separate of that. And racism is real. We still live in a country where people like to create the lines of, you know, black and white. Sadly. Sadly. A lot of talk about racial gender inequality in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. What do you think about it? 
I think it's an old conversation. I think it's a topic that hasn't changed. I think it's um, it saddens me that we aren't in a place where we can just make good art and we aren't in a place where I can be cast as the leading woman and my description does not have to say African American or black. Why not? Why haven't we come further? Because I think we're still afraid. I think everything, I think there's, First of all, nothing good ever comes from separatism. When you start to separate and create gaps between people and cultures and projects in movies, you automatically create a space to be judged. And for me, that is fear-based. I think it's fear-based. Malcolm X discovered that and came back and changed. That's right. You're 45. What about aging in Hollywood? Oh, Get gosh. black, white. What about 45-year-old women? Well, here's the thing. I'm 45, I'm black, and I'm a woman. So those are three really hard things to deal with. And Except when I you're always working. Except I'm always working, but I work really hard to get sometimes crumbs. I'm not going to be, I'm, 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 I feel blessed and lucky to have the career that I have, but there are times I've been beat up in this business. It hasn't been just roses and fairy tales. It's been a tough road, and you have to stick to what you believe in. You have to be strong. You have to be able to say no. And, 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 and I cannot afford to operate out of fear. What did you make of anyway, the Oscar boycott? Well, I think Jada Pinkett Smith, I love her. I've known her for years. I think that what she said was a wake-up call for everyone. I don't think she was, you know, trying to make a statement of, of, of being sort of a disgruntled actor that her husband didn't get a nomination. I think she was voicing her opinion about something. And she left it free for everybody to take the position that they wanted to take. Personally, I don't think boycotting is going to solve anything because we should celebrate all actors and all good work. But I do think that Hollywood needs to wake up and acknowledge that there are far fewer op opportunities for African American, black people, minorities in this business. I do think we need to realize and acknowledge that there is a, a huge pay difference between men and women. And I think Patricia Arquette said it best in her Oscar speech. Yeah. That margin is, is, is unbelievable. I second what you say. You grew up in Iowa? Well, so I was born in Brooklyn. My family's from Trinidad. I'm Brooklyn. I'm Brooklyn. You're Scorpio, I'm Scorpio. Listen. And I didn't talk to you on the plane. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, Just, you know, we can always get the PJ. We can go fly and talk the whole time. Now, there are strange things. Yeah. Bernie Sanders yeah. is a Jew who grew up in Brooklyn and didn't go to Miami but went to Vermont. You're <laughs> a black woman in Brooklyn. Yeah. You go to Iowa. Kind of the same thing. <laughs> what took you to Iowa? <laughs> My mom is actually an artist. She's a fine artist. She uh, went there for graduate school. She was a single oh, mom. Oh, at Ames? Yeah, it's the University of Iowa. Great school. Yeah, and uh, she was an is an amazing woman, amazing artist, and that's where, you know, they gave her a full ride, and she divorced my dad, and off we went. And so I was the only little African-American girl with a big, big, juicy afro with, <laughs> in, a, in a school with about 250 kids. And that was my first experience where I, where I actually realized that I was different where I was chased home and, and I, there were racist slurs. I didn't know what the word n was until I lived in Iowa and grew up there, so. Sad. It's sad, but it's it's part of. But I thought Ames was a pretty progressive city. I think maybe now, but we're talking town, 1970s. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little Up next, we're, little talking, we're talking family basketball and Nia's bucket list. We'll be right back. <laughs> My bucket list. Nia Long is our guest. She's in the movie Keanu. It opens April 20th. She is not the cat. It opens April well. 29th, and she, Uncle Buck has come. We'll talk about that in a while. You're engaged to uh, Ime I, Udaka. Ime Udoka. The assist, one of the assistant coaches of the yes. San Diego. There's a female assistant coach yes, of the San Antonio Becky. Spurs. Amazing. You live and die with the Spurs? I am. I mean, I'm a diehard. I love basketball. I love sports. I have two boys. I'm a soccer mom. Well, we don't play soccer, but I'm a baseball mom and a basketball mom. Me too. Mom. I'm a baseball dad. Oh, gosh. I love it so much. It's so amazing when you see your child do something 
that they just love to do. Okay, your fiance, yes. who's the father of your little son, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. He's in San Antonio, plus wherever the NBA sends him. That's right. And you don't live in Texas. I don't live in Texas. So how does this work? We just do a lot of traveling. You know, it feels like dating. It always feels like we're dating. It keeps it fresh. You post pictures on social media. My wife does that all day. I love it. It's Your fun. oldest son is into baseball, like my, yes. my two boys. Yes. You, you, Shortstop. You go to watch him? I do. Yeah, of course. Okay, we're going to play a little game of If You Only Knew. I just throw some questions at you. Ready, Nia? Yeah, I'm ready. Should have talked to you on the plane. Hit me. Hit What's me, Larry. What's the moment you knew you'd made it? Right now. Why didn't I know? <laughs> Favorite song in the shower? I don't sing in the shower. I'm okay, that's good. You don't sing. I don't sing. sing. I don't have time to sing. Who has time to sing when you have kids? Uh, I take two minutes shower. It's a quick shower, yeah. and the little one's usually in there with me, <laughs> throwing everything everywhere. Secret talent. Oh, wow. I don't know if it's a secret. I'm a really good cook. If you could trade places with someone for a day, who would it be? Michelle Obama. Great lady. Name a movie you wish you'd been in. Oh, Beaches with Bette Midler. I love that movie so much. I did to cry a lot. Oh my God, just heartbreaking. Name a movie you wish you hadn't been in. <laughs> what movie you made that you regret? I did a film. Um, oh God, it was for it was it went straight to cable. Oh. Terrence Howard was in it. Really. And it was a terrible film about a record company. And they changed the name twice to try to get more people to watch it. And I don't remember any of the names. Because I'm going to pretend like I never did that film. Okay, you never did that film. I never did Who do it. you consider a role model? Oh, my grandmother, who's in heaven, who is always with me. You have roots in Trinidad, right? I do, yeah. What's one thing people should know about the island? Oh. I love the music. The music is amazing. The food is amazing. The people are warm. It's all about love. What do people get wrong about you? That I'm difficult. That I'm hard to please. Really? That's your image? I don't think it's my image, but I think people I'm... People think that. I think I'm misunderstood Because you're sometimes. outspoken. I'm outspoken, but I'm not outspoken inappropriately. I know how to stand up for myself. Something on your bucket list. Oh, I need to do a bit more traveling. I'd like to go to Morocco. I'd like Best. to go to China. Yeah, I've never been there. Yeah. Best piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, let's see. Um, it's a marathon, not a race. Something you long believed to be true but realized isn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's think about that, Larry. That everything has to be perfect. I think perfection is boring. Yeah. Mess it up a little bit. Make it interesting. Yeah. Be easy. Breathe. Take All a moment. All black and white ain't the world. All black and white is not the world. And you know what's interesting is my fiance operates a lot in the gray area, and he's actually taught me to appreciate the gray area because I think when you're in the gray area, that's when you discover true faith. Does he want to be a head coach? Oh, yeah. That's the goal. That's the sacrifice. That's why I wait all summer to have my honey home. When we come back, Nia will answer some of your questions in our final segment, and we'll talk about the ABC comedy, a remake of Uncle Buck. That's next. Uncle Buck. It's an ABC series. It's an ABC series. That was a hysterical movie. Oh my gosh, yes it was. I recently rewatched it and I just the thought... The Crazy Uncle Comes, right? Oh my goodness, it's so good. You play Buck's sister-in-law. I do. Did you have fun doing this? How many of you shot? So much fun. Eight episodes. Eight episodes. I wanted to do half hour. I started in half hour with Will Smith. I wanted to just go to work and laugh. Like, life is so serious. It's intense. There's kids. There's all these moving parts. I thought, you know what? Going to work and laughing could be really good for my soul. And that's what I did. Was John Hughes a... Do you like John Hughes? Oh, my one? gosh, yes. His films are like... Timeless. Now, Will Packer is the executive producer, right? Yeah. He also produced Straight Outta Compton. Yes, he did. The, the super You think that movie got the recognition it deserved? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. It was a beautiful film. F. Gary Gray, who directed it, is a friend of mine. He also shot Friday. I thought he did a, a seamless job. I thought it was perfect. Are you comfortable with comedy? I am. You know what, though? The first couple of weeks, I was so nervous because... 
you really have to listen a lot more with comedy. And your timing has to be right on, otherwise the joke falls flat. But I'm working with Mike Epps. He's one of the best yeah. in the game. He's so honest. He's a joy to work with. He's another Scorpio. We have great chemistry. We have so much fun. I just hope that the world loves the show as much as we do. I'm sure they will. I hope so. I'm like fingers crossed. I'm so, I've been a nervous wreck for like a month. You posted a picture of you and Barack and Michelle Obama in March. How'd you meet yes. them? Yes. I've met them twice. I've, I feel very lucky to, to have been to the White House. Um, I worked with the campaign for um, creating funds for college, um, health care, women's rights, talked a lot about those topics sort of early on in the administration. And, you know, I became a part, I was an advocate for him, I still am. Who are you, who are you for now? Oh boy. You know, Bernie is an idealist, but I don't know that he really understands. How can he get it passed? The plight of the people. I like Hillary. I don't know. You don't know. It's definitely not vote, Donald. You'll vote Democrat. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Donald Trump, I just feel like this country will implode if he becomes president. You know what I call this election? Hmm. Electile dysfunction. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. That is exactly what it is. We have some social media questions for it's you. very scary. Guy Fi tweets, any future plans to do a movie with Nollywood, the Nigerian film industry. They can make their best offer. There's a little Jewish in everybody. <laughs> Definitely. At Mora Logan, do you keep in touch with anyone from your days on, you were on Guiding Light? I was on Guiding Light. That was my, my first job. My mother's favorite. Oh. Yeah, did she listen to it on the radio? You know, we were the first. Sure. Yeah. Radio, we listened to Guiding Light and then radio, rated on television. That's right. I want to watch my story, she Aww, used to say. Mama. My story. That's cute. I don't keep in touch with anyone because I don't know where anyone is, but. Were soaps funny? Were they fun, rather fun to do? You know what? I, f I feel like. For me, um, I did two years of college and I got a job right away and I feel like that was sort of my training. That was my, those are my years of college and I learned so much. I learned how to be quick on my toes and understand blocking and we would shoot like 25 pages in a day. So you, uh. there's no room to be um, unprepared. I remember the radio, Guiding Light. Yeah. At J.J. Jameson, Jameson via our blog, was there actually as much fighting between cast members on the set of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air as everyone says there is? There was no fighting when I was there. Everybody loved one another. At Author Amir Ask, any upcoming special projects? Well, um, Keanu, April 29th, Uncle Buck, June 14th. Um, I'm circling this little project that I may produce, which I'm really excited about. I'm, I think it's time for me to spread my wings and take on a new hat. Um, oh, boy. Yeah. You got to take chances, right? Don't you think? Okay, we didn't talk on the plane. <laughs> what would you like to talk about? What would you like to ask me? <laughs> I've been asking you all these stuff. What is your... Best advice for raising a 15-year-old teenager who's feeling himself and smelling his pits. If you, if you could understand, best advice. First. <sighs> yeah, see, you okay. feel the same way I do. Uh, dealing with the iPhone. Okay, that's number one. How to get them to listen. Yeah. My son's name is Chance. Chance. Here, here's what happens. Well, yeah. I got Chance and Cannon. Okay. Chance is 17, Cannon's about to be 16. Here is what is heard most of the day with me and Chance. Chance! Chance! <laughs> Chance! They tune you out. Yeah. They What's don't listen. What's your son's name? Masai. Masai? Yeah. What a name. I like yeah. that name. Yeah, Masai Shivago Dorsey. He doesn't know the story of Dr. Shivago yet, but one day he will. <laughs> You're thank great. you. I want to thank my guest, Nia Long. <laughs> Keanu's in theaters April 29th. 
Uncle Buck premieres on June 14th on ABC. You can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time.